But we thank God for New Jerusalem, home of the saved, praise God. Whereas we have a natural family and a spiritual family. And to the single parents, praise God, whether it be a single mom or a single dad, to know that you have a heavenly father. Praise God. But some of us grew up without a father. But I thank God for my heavenly father. And his name is Jesus. Praise God. So, and then you want to be sure that they're just being children and having fun. Praise God. That they are hopeful. They are confident. That they are courageous. Praise God. Because you want to make it very clear to them that they can get through anything that they face in life. And I think that's something we need to really trump on because the enemy has got a plan out there for our children, our grandchildren. But God has a better plan. God has a better plan. And we have to make it very clear to them that they can get through. For it's a part of the growing process. And the decisions and the choices that they make is going to affect them one way or another. Somebody say amen. amen. That's why we have to be examples and the fathers we talked to this morning, this morning, but also the mothers have to set an example before their children as well. But we deal with about the fathers. Praise God. And then it repeats again to some degree in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And we might not agree with everything they do or everything they say, but the words say, Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy mother, sorry, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Now our Heavenly Father loves the family and he's concerned about every aspect of their life. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Amen. That he is concerned, praise God. Then the next verse says that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. See, the children are given the command of obedience and with that command, it offers the promise of long life. Glory to God. Then it repeats again in verse 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up, train them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So what are you saying? And bringing them up, training them in love, admonishing the ways of the Lord, telling them about Jesus, reminding them of his love for them, his plan for him, for them, not to harm them, but to pro prosper them. And their responsibility to make the right choices in life. And surely as you walk them through the book of Proverbs, it will give you some hints about the facts of life. Can somebody say amen? amen. It's very plain and it's very clear. Glory to God. Because there are many verses that will help them to make right choices in life through their prayer and studying the Bible. Praise God. To let them know the importance of seeking God, to hear the sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind that is spoken of, that was spoken of on the day of Pentecost. Praise God. Some characters that good fathers show forth can be, they are the same person wherever they may be, as a husband and as a father wherever they go on the job, in the classroom setting, in the public. In other words, they are consistent. <coughs> They're consistent. And as married fathers, showing love towards their wives is one of the greatest things they can ever give their children. And this is certainly a teachable moment. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Glory to God. Because they spend time in the Word, in prayer, and with fellowship with God. Glory to God. They practice discipline of meekness in the home, knowing that yelling and abuse of any kind has zero tolerance. Amen. And that doesn't mean that we don't raise our voice from time to time, because I think you know, but I had. But I had to come back and get that right, Pastor. Praise God. I had to come back and get it right, because your yelling, you know, they know how to tune you out. Does somebody know what I'm saying as a parent? They know how to tune you right out. You talking what is going over their head. But you want what you're saying and showing them to enter into their hearts. Praise God. Of the right thing. Glory to God. But certainly, praise God. 
in some cases, when they meet your attention, something else may have your attention. But you have to stop what you're doing, put on your listening ears sometime, and hear them before you even speak. Glory to God. Does somebody know what I'm saying this morning? You do. We have to listen to them. Because if we don't listen to them, somebody else is going to listen to them and tell them and teach them too. But when you give them the training at home, praise God, then when they go out, they know how to tune out things that don't line up with what you're teaching and what you're telling them about the Word. That's why the Bible said we are to teach them, train them in the nurture and admonition, admonition of the Lord. Tell them about God's ways, praise God. And good fathers know how to engage their sons and their daughters. Even so much during those teen years. Somebody say amen. Amen. Because those teen years can be pretty rough. But thank God. He was God in the Old Testament. And he's God in the New Testament. And he's given us instructions on how to train them. And being that good listener, praise God. And um, by all means, you want your children to feel secure and to know that you believe in them they might not always do things right praise god but you and i being the adult mother and father praise god we're talking most about the fathers but we're including the mothers too as parents we have to let our children know that they are secure we have their protection we're their covering praise god and god is the covering over us praise god and that husband being the head of his home their children want to feel safe and secure because if they don't in the home, believe me, there's so many children that are running loose out there without parents and without understanding. It, it, this might be a, a sharp message this morning, but it's going to be teaching. It's to help me with my grandchildren because my children are grown, and it's to help you. To encourage you as parents, it's a job raising your children today. It's a job training them today. Because the Bible even tells us they are weaker but wiser. So much things have changed when we, from my generation to the next generation to this generation today, things have changed. But it's nothing new from the Bible. Praise God. It's nothing new. Praise God. But to encourage you, praise God, to know, as Bishop told us last Sunday, that we have a friend and his name is Jesus and we need him. We need him to lead us, to guide us, to direct us, praise God, to be that friend in teaching us, praise God, as being parents, praise God, of how to raise our children to be strong and courageous young men and women. Because the enemy does have a plan, and he's sneaky. He's sneaky with his plan, praise God. When you are not watchful, praise God, he knows just how to come in, and if you're not careful, he will come in and take over. But thank God for the spirit of God, of discernment, praise God, and he knows how to pre-warn you about something. He knows how to pre-warn you, say, my child, yes, your child, praise God, because there was a time, there was my, my youngest son, I didn't think he could do nothing wrong, but God had to show me different about that thing. Glory be to God. Because see, he didn't have, he didn't have the Holy Ghost. Because even with the Holy Ghost, we are subject to error if we're not careful. Okay? It's not, I don't believe that once saved, always saved. It's a process of growing in the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise God. And it was proven to me, praise God, when he got in trouble in school, I said, okay. Because it didn't have that much of a problem out of him. But that let me know, praise God. Don't go there with that. Praise God. He's not perfect. No, he's not. By any means. But I thank God and saying this to encourage you. Be watchful. Keep your spiritual eyes open. Praise God. Because even though as close as you keep them to you, praise God, the enemy is so shrewd that he's trying to figure out a way how I can pull them away from you and even more so pull them away from God. So we have to stay careful. We have to stay watchful. And that, 
that father being the head, that husband being the head of the family, not only for his children, but for his wife too. Yes. And even for himself. And that's why that wife is that support system for him. She's praying for him. Yes. Praise God. Because we can get wrapped up in, in, in the jobs and the different things that can go on. So we are praying one for another. We got one another's back. Is that all right? Yes. We have to have one another's back in prayer to keep the enemy in his place. Because he is shrewd, praise God. And he is a thief. He came to steal, to kill, and destroy. And any way that he can break down your family over the least little thing. I mean, some things we think that are penny ante, but the devil know how to get in that thing and just mess up. Oh, but thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. That you know when to be quiet, praise God. And let God move in your behalf, praise God. Because it's not as much as singing the song, victory is mine if I hold my peace. And let the Lord fight my battle. But what about when that text comes, praise God? When the enemy comes in and want to wreak havoc, praise God. And you can reach back and the Holy Ghost said, be silent. I got, in other words, I got this. Because see, he ain't going to argue about himself, praise God. But he knows to take the least little thing and just bend it all out of shape, praise God. And some people just got an argumentative spirit anyhow. Let's just be real. But I thank God for the peace of God. Because see, when you're striving to have the peace of God, confusion got to go. Yeah. They can't live on the same line. He's not the author of confusion. Yeah. But he's the God of peace. Yeah. And in any situation, in any circumstance, you can have peace. Yeah. Oh, yes, you can. All hell, as it say, may be breaking loose. But I tell you, after this circumstance, you just carry on because I'm going to praise the Lord. Yeah. And as we talk about your secret closet, I may not go to per se. But while you were carrying on and acting up, I'm in my closet giving God praise. Yes. Oh God. Yes. Hallelujah. And that's the way we have to be. Even in the home, the least of the thing. Come home with a bad report from school for the child. Do we jump all over? No. We find out what's going on. Listen to what they have to say. Because there were times I didn't listen to them. I shut them down and took somebody else's word. But I had to learn better. You hear me fathers and mothers? We have to learn, but we have to listen to them. They were part of us, praise God. And they might be being mistreated in school, and they don't know how to come to us and talk to us about it, so they just began to really act up. And you're wondering, where did, it, where did this come from? But now, had I taken the time when he tried to come and say, Mommy or Daddy, such and such happened. Oh, you know the teacher's right. You know the teacher's right. Uh-uh. Not always. So you have, there's two sides to the story. So you have to listen to your children. And then when they come to me, and you want to keep that communication line open. Because by doing things like that, you shut them down that they won't even come to you when mom and dad are not going to receive me anyway. So I just hold this in, and then I just got to act up to show them something is really going on on the inside. But thank God for the power of prayer and the spiritual eyes will help us and enable us to see these things that we know how to parent our children. Glory be to God. As we want to draw them closer to Jesus. And not only that, I'm standing here telling you about the word of God. And then when I go home, it's a different scene. And that's where we said in the beginning, a godly man is going to show forth the same love of God in the church as he does in his home. Because charity behavior at home, then it spreads abroad. Praise God. Because it doesn't do any good for me to come down here and try to show off before you and then go home and it's a whole different thing. The Bible says the very hope that's a hypocrite is going to perish. It's not going to stand. So we have to be real wherever we are. It's to be real because God is an all-seeing God. He is all-seeing. He don't sleep and he don't slumber. Praise God. So now, some scriptures on the character of a godly father. And this is to the single and to the married fathers. First Chronicles 29 and 17 says, I know, my God, that you examine our hearts and rejoice when you find integrity. Praise God. That father is walking in his integrity when he's doing the characters of God. 
walking in love. Praise God. And how is the father walk in love? First Corinthians is the love chapter, 13th chapter, the fourth and the eighth verse, through the eighth verse, tells us about God's love as it is manifest in you as you walk with God. And in the fourth, beginning at the fourth verse, it says, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity endeth not. In other words, there's no room for no jealousy. Praise God. Charity wanted not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. So in other words, no matter how bad things may get, it say love suffered long. And another scripture tells us that love covers a multitude of sin and fault. What do you say about that covering? Is that you are seeing the good in whatever the situation is. Praise God. And you're praying and trusting God for the good outcome. That's suffering long. It is kind. And if not, it's not jealous. Praise God. Because we serve the same God. So there's no reason for any jealousy. Praise God. It rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things. In other words, bears under anything and everything that comes through the power of God. Believeth all things. Hopeth all things. Endureth all things. Charity never faileth, fathers. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. In other words, love is patient, it's kind. It does not boast, and it is not proud. It's not rude. So when you see me rude, you know that's not the Holy Ghost. It is not self-seeking. Here I am, here I am, don't you see me? It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, trusts, always hope, always perseveres. Love never fails. So whatever the situation is, fathers, you can get through it through Jesus. And a father always shows compassion. Psalms 103 and 13 says, Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him, meaning those who show reverence and respect. Praise God. Sometimes our actions speak louder than our words at certain times. But that compassion comes from Jesus as he has shown it to us. We are to show that same compassion to our children. And the Father teaches wisdom. And that goes back into Proverbs again. There's a lot of wisdom in Proverbs. And the fourth chapter, 11 through the 13th verse says, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straight. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. The words of Solomon is saying, I guide you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to the instructions. Don't let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Praise God. Walking in the wisdom of God, because man has wisdom too. But the wisdom that is from God, praise God, you will run, praise God, and it won't be crooked. And when you run, you won't stumble, praise God. And then that legacy that Father leaves for his children in Proverbs 23 and 24, the father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice, and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. In other words, the father of the one who is right with God will have much joy. 
He who has a wise son will be glad for him. His training has not been vain, and the fruit of his teaching has been good towards his children to see them make good decisions as they grow in an uncertain world. For surely the devil has many tools to offer them, but God steps in through their obedience to the word of God. Praise God. And then there is courage. Fathers must have courage. Joshua 1 and 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And thank God, just as he spoke to Joshua, he is yet speaking today. Be strong and courageous before your family and others. Teaching and admonishing your family in love and being an example before them and in the presence of God. Be blessed today, all of you fathers. Families of God, blessing to all of you as you walk in love, serving the Lord, to know that your labor of love is not in vain. Praise God. Praise the name of God. As we come today in closing, we are breaking the spirit of failure in the name of Jesus. We are breaking the spirit of failure. That was given to me as I sat here. Praise God. We are breaking the spirit of failure in the name of Jesus. Because we can do all things through Christ that strengthens you and strengthens me. We are breaking the spirit of failure. Praise God. Now, if you choose to walk in the spirit of failure, that's one thing. But God is here today to break the spirit of failure over you, over your family, in the name of Jesus. Because his word declares, you can do all things, all things, through Christ, through Christ Jesus, that strengthens you. Lord, I'm weak. Take the word to heart today. Glory to God. He's not coming down, but he sent his word. He sent the Holy Ghost, praise God, to let you know you can break the spirit of failure. That weakness, praise God. But you got to walk in the word. Accept the word for what it says. Where are you weak at? He said, I am strong. So how does that happen? You've got to lay it aside and walk in the word. You've got to lay aside every sin and every weight because it's going to beset you. It's going to hold you back. But when you accept that you want to break the spirit of failure, I am no longer weak, but I'm strong in Jesus. And when the enemy brings that thing before you, praise the name of our God, I can do all things. Not some, but all things through Christ Jesus that strengthen me. Now, I don't know who that word was for today, but I pray that you accept it. You won't have to go to him any longer, praise God. Lord, I'm weak. I need you to help praise God, but receive the help that he's given you that you can do this through Christ Jesus. When the enemy comes, praise God, let him know I am no longer weak, but I am strong in Jesus. That thing that you've got me held in bondage, the gates have come open, praise God. The chain has been broken. The chain has been broken, but you've got to receive it and walk in it. The months done turned into years. My God, it's time to do a change. For things to get better, praise God. For you to be that pillar, praise God, that God wants to place you in. Oh God, you've got to get rid of that thing of yourself. Lord, I'm weak. I can't do it any longer. Yes, you can. You might have come to the end of your rope, praise God. But come and cast your cares upon Jesus because he cares for you, praise God. Give it over to Jesus. Walk in the newness of life. My God. It's time to stop repeating the word and put the word to action. Take authority over the enemy. Glory to God. you got to walk in the word. It's not enough to talk about it. It's not enough to tell somebody else about it, Pastor. But it's time, praise God, for you to walk in this thing. It's time. It's 
time to walk in you. Break the spirit of fear. I just can't do it any longer, Lord. I tried it on my own and I failed. But there is no failure in God. Praise the name of God. There is no failure in God. None whatsoever. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. It's time to tell that enemy. Praise God. You read heaven long enough. But there's a loving God that's telling you today, break the spirit of failure. The chain is broken. I'm no longer weak. Let the weak say that I am strong. I am strong. You have no more hold on me. And don't think he's not going to come back. Because he's going to come back with the force and see if you are ready to give this thing up. Yeah. And if you are ready, let me tell you, Jesus been ready. Hallelujah. He's been ready, praise God. Hallelujah. To give you the victory over, hallelujah, he's got the victory over death, hell, and the grave. And that victory is yours today. It is time to stop babysitting and petting that thing. I am weak. I can't do it no longer. In your own strength, you are right. You can. But I tell you through Christ Jesus, you can do this thing. You can stand tall, praise God. Hallelujah. And he's given you his best of the Holy Ghost. Now what's the excuse? After that the Holy Ghost has come, you shall have power. It's time to activate that power. Put it in practice. Glory be to God. Put it in practice. Walk in your authority. You kept me captive all these years. But I accept the plan of Jesus today. I am no longer weak, but I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And I can do all things through him that strengthen me. I say A-L-L, -L, all, not some, but all things. No matter what the trial, no matter what the test, you can make it. You can make it through Jesus. Won't you accept the change? take the word. Amen. It's a faith walk. Amen. you got to take this word. Hallelujah. Take captive of this word. Don't let the enemy keep feeding into your mind. My God, your flesh. Your flesh needs to die. Yes. It needs to die. Yes. And when you're willing to die, because he said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Yes. So that tells Praise God. I can't just stand and say, behold, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. And I'm not trying to clean up anything, mother, but I want to walk in my same old ways. I want to do my same old things. I want to go my same old places. It won't work. Praise God. You can't straddle a fence in this walk. But you better come to the street called straight. Forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. In other words, if Evangelist Owens has wronged me, I have to forgive her. Praise God. That he may forgive me. See, that, that's, that's the catch. And I think some people just really don't believe that thing. But Jesus said, if you don't forgive one another from your heart, neither will he forgive you. And that's plain enough for me. That's plain enough. And if he went through the crucifixion that he did, praise God, a crown of thorns planted upon his head. They whipped him. They pierced him in his side. And if he could stand there through all that thing, that pain, because I don't know about you, but a rose, those thorns, they are painful. They are painful. If you get one of those things called your finger, you're going to feel it. And to have somebody put a crown on your head, praise God, and he could stand and lift his eyes to his father and say, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. I don't care what you've done, what you said. It's forgiven already. That's all I've had in me. And I thank you for establishing that in me. See, I don't want to stand and be one to just quote the word, talk about the word, tell somebody this stuff. I don't want to be a castaway, Paul said. Though I preach this gospel, in other words, if I'm not following it, I don't want to be a castaway. But I want to be an example. And the father's being an example as a husband and before their children. We as saints of God have to be an example to other people. In our home, on our jobs, in the school, wherever we are, we are setting an example that somebody is watching. The tree is known by the fruit that it is. And again, I say, we are here to break the spirit of failure in the name of Jesus. You don't have to walk in the spirit of failure, but you can walk in victory. If you came in that way, you don't have to leave as you came in. God bless you today. I know we're talking things about the fathers, but the spirit of God is saying today, Break the spirit of failure in the name of Jesus. For we can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthen you. God bless you today.